Welcome to Pass It Down Garage. What's up, YouTube family? This is Brian at Inland Racing. This is Gage, my son. We're going to be starting a new blog series. It's going to be called... Pass It Down Garage. Pass It Down Garage. My father passed down my love for cars uh, to me at a very young age. We used to do street, street racing, and he had a uh, machine shop I grew up in. And I kind of always just took to the cars, always loved cars. And my son's kind of the same way right now. He's really taken an interest in it. We have a little uh, a Mustang, little power wheel that we kind of souped up and did some stuff to it, which we'll show you a little bit later. We'll actually do a little series with it as well. Um, he's been very, very interested in Roadkill Garage and the different uh, you know uh, series and stuff like that on Motor Trend TV. Um, so we thought we'd be kind of fun just to kind of work on the, our Mustang project, uh, 67 Mustang, which was my father's car. Uh, it was passed down uh, to me uh, not too long ago. I've been working on it since I was 16 on and off. Uh, just never have the money or the time to do it. And then, of course, got kids, got married, all that good stuff. Um, so kind of put a dampener on it, but we're really close to getting paint on it. Um, I do have the engine all in it. We do have to rebuild the transmission. There's a lot of different things we're going to need to do to it still. Uh, our goal is to have it done and running by the end of uh, this winter. Uh, so we should be able to start racing it this, uh, this next summer. Uh, that's our goal. So here's our 1967 Mustang that we're working on. Used to be in my father's car, uh, grew up in it. Uh, it's been registered, last time registered, since 1989. Uh, he ended up wrecking it in the front. We ended up having to buy it back from the insurance company. Uh, he never had enough time or money to put the car back together. Um, it has a 351 Cleveland in it, nine inch rear end, uh, C4 transmission. Uh, it's been souped up pretty darn good. He used to do a lot of street racing with it back in the day. Um, Gage and I are going to work on the doors today and we'll uh, show you what we're up against. So this is the driver door and as you can see right here someone tried to cut a spot open to try to replace the spring that that actuates the latch on the door. Also they over tightened these screws here causing it to crack. There was a temporary fix where they've tried to put a washer on it to hold it in place. We're actually going to have to replace that eventually. On the passenger door we had a really bad rust spot right here. We ended up cutting a panel out of a hood and we actually ended up panel bonding the whole thing in. It actually turned out very nice. This door here is the passenger side. It's pretty much already prepped and ready for paint. All we have to do is just do a quick scuff. We do have some spots where we put a little bit of spot putty. After we sand it down we found some quick, some little small imperfections. Uh, we just need to get a little bit of 400 grit on it, scuff it up, and this will be ready for a final prime and final paint. You ready? Okay, I got a little bit more here and then we'll spray it off and then we'll be ready to start prepping it, okay? What's the prepping? Prepping? Prepping's when we actually will get all the dust off and we'll use some cleaner and we'll clean it all off to get all the dirt and anything that's stuck to it. So when we paint it, it'll stick really good. Buddy. I need to have Alrighty, you ready? Hold it up here. 
push. Alright. Let's go ahead and move to prep. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. I'm good too. Now we're going to be going ahead and use, moving to prep clean. This right here is a prep clean out. It's from R&M, a BASF product. Uh, it's 9 900. It's a wax and silicone remover. It's also going to get any kind of debris that's stuck in there. We'll go ahead and get these rags and start wiping the thing down. Looks like we do have a low spot still right here. Once we did our sanding and our spot putty, there's a high spot that showed up here and here. And when you feel it with the, your hands, your fingertips, uh, when I was going over it with the rag, you can feel that there is still a little bit of an indentation there. We're going to have to get a little bit of spot putty, or not spot putty, we're going to have to get a little bit of uh, filler and fill that up a little bit just to get rid of that dent. You could possibly do some PDR, but since right here is kind of close to where my weld was when I put my patch panel in, more than likely, we can't get to it, so we'll just have to use some filler. What's a fill? filler? Filler is a piece of, it's like a, almost like a, a putty that you put in. Yeah. You, you end up prepping your surface, mm -hmm. and you'll end up skimming over it. It's like that Bondo stuff that we used one time, it's Bondo brand. Mm -hmm. but what you, it's a little bit thinner, but what we'll do is we'll, we'll take it, and we'll fill this all up, and then when we sand it, it'll get rid of that dent. Oh. So right now he's cleaning up this surface, getting ready to put some filler on. As you can see, my two fingers here. As you can see, right here is where our panel that we actually welded back in place goes. So you have a little bit of a high spot here. And with the filler, it actually created a high with the low spot. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be filling that back in. There's just a little bit. It's really, really not that bad. But it is something that when we put the clear coat on, you'll be able to tell it's there. So we definitely want to address it now while we can. So right now I'm mixing just a little bit of the Evercoat Metal Glaze. Uh, it's super thin. Just do a small little bit. A uh, little bit goes a long way on a small dent like this. Uh, you're going to put a small little dot a hardener, you're going to mix it up, and then you'll be ready to apply. Is it coming, coming along good, Gagey? Yep. Good. Doing alright over there, bud? Yeah. Just washing this area too. That area too? Okay. So I fell down when I was wiggling this thing. All that good. On this driver's side door, uh, someone put the handle on and over tightened it. It ended up creating an issue where this part right here is actually pushed up real bad. So we have a real bad high spot there. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to fix it. Uh, what are we going to use? Hammer. A hammer. All right. So Gage is in control of the camera. If it goes anywhere, it's his fault. We're going to start dollying this down. Hey, Daddy, I'm going to party. Great.
Hang on a second. All right. Pretty good. A lot better than what it was. All right. While we wait for the doors to actually uh, cure, uh, we're going to be going on a potty break. We'll be back. Stay tuned. Are you ready, Gage? Yep. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we got our filler on the door. We did have to put another second coating. There was still a little bit of a low spot there after we did our sanding. Uh, Gage, you did a really good job sanding today. And did you have fun? Mm-hmm. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and take the uh, door hinges off and we're gonna take them and get them media blasted and we're gonna replace the pins. Where are we going, Gage? We're going to Grandpa's house. Dad's gonna take off the door hinges. That's number one. Number one. Let's go to this next one. That's two. Now we'll go to the other side. One. That's two. Now where we're going? Alright, we're on our way to my dad's house. Uh, he's got my media blaster there. It's a snap-on. Uh, it's a cabinet style. Uh, we're going to get these hinges all sandblasted so we get ready for primer and then we can eventually paint it the color of the vehicle. Uh, we will probably have to change the hinge pins as well. Are you ready to go? Mm -hmm. Say yeah? Yeah. I can't hear you. Yeah. Okay, let's go. On another episode, we're going to be working on this 1971 Dodge Coronet. It's a 360 318 head. It's my father's other car. Uh, this was our family car. We pretty much 
grew up in it and uh, it's very very near and dear to my dad it's been run down uh, definitely needs paint needs a lot a lot of work uh, this will be more of a roadkill type style vehicle but uh, we'll hopefully we can get this done quick too all right we're at dad's workshop right now uh, he's been doing a lot of woodworking and uh, uh, restorations on the house so we're kind of buried right now where my cabinet is we're gonna have to clean this all out uh, then we'll go ahead and get media blasted and we'll see when we're done well unfortunately we had a little bit of problem with the media blaster uh, the lines are frozen due to it being cold outside and snowing so we weren't able to get these uh, sandblasted all the way uh, what we're going to do instead is we're going to go ahead and use a paint stripper to get any kind of paint uh, any kind of uh, primer that's on it and we're going to go ahead and put it in a vapor rust overnight and we'll see what it looks like then well that didn't go as planned we were originally wanting to get those uh, door hinges media blasted get them primed and actually painted the color of the car today with some clear coat uh, but due to the weather the lines froze on the uh, media blaster so we weren't able to get any air pressure uh, so instead what we're going to be doing is we're going to be heading home uh, getting where it's nice and warm and uh, we'll do some stuff at, at the shop at home clean up some bolts do something like that uh, this that's how it goes uh, sometimes you get the stuff done sometimes things happen and you have to kind of set aside it's a small delay uh, but it's something we can't uh, we can definitely handle it Stay tuned for another episode of Awesome outtake.